It's basically December, it's minus two degrees Celsius outside, and I'm filming a night sky video in generally an unheated garage. Let's begin. How's it going, everybody? My name is Rosine, and welcome to the final night sky episode for 2021. That's the night sky in December. A curated list of deep sky objects, planets, events, galaxies, nebulae, you name it, probably here, that's going on in the month of December. Now, all these are based off of the full frame camera format, 35 millimeters, but equivalents will be on the left hand side here for your particular camera. So we're gonna go through different focal lengths and I'm gonna tell you what I recommend imaging in December. Let's begin with deep sky objects. At 100 to 200 millimeters, I'm going to be recommending the Orion Nebula and the Horsehead Nebula. Now all throughout November, I basically badgered on about the Orion area, the constellation of Orion, but at these wider field of views, especially in the dark skies, broadband, and especially with a hydrogen alpha filter, you're gonna be picking up a lot of the surrounding dust and gas. It's gonna be worth it. Lay on the integration time, wider field of view. Wow, chef's kiss, great photos to be had. At three to 400 millimeters, just next to Orion, I'm gonna be recommending quite a difficult target here, the Witch Head Nebula. It's a reflection nebula and it's quite dim. So there's no cheating in using narrowband filters, unfortunately, to bring it out from the background sky. It's best imaged under darker skies. So if you're un up for the challenge, Witch Head Nebula, give it a go. At 700 to 800 millimeters, I'm gonna be recommending an emission type nebula in mono series, and this is the Christmas Tree Nebula. So aptly timed for December, really, if you celebrate Christmas. And if you orient it correctly, you'll understand why it's known as the Christmas Tree Nebula. It's also known as the Koi Nebula and the Fox Fur Nebula, if you've heard those ones called as well. If you image it in SHO and keep hydrogen alpha as green, another reason why you'll see why it's called the Christmas Tree Nebula. Especially, like I said, this time of the year, photograph it, print it, give it to as a gift to people you know who like space. And I'm sure you know a few people who like space. At 1000 millimeters, I'm going to be recommending that we go over to Gemini now for a rather small emission type target, and that is IC443, the Jellyfish Nebula. Now, if this was me, and is right next to that nice bright star Propus, I would probably be going for a HARGB composite of this. I mean, I personally love HARGB, and this is one that I'll definitely give that treatment. The HA will really help bring out those really fine tendril details of the jellyfish, whilst the RGB would give you a nice natural color star field. So, at 1,000 millimeters, that's my recommendation for you in December. At 1,500 millimeters, we're gonna be going over the constellation of Perseus now, and it isn't the California Nebula. I know, right, there's other things in Perseus. This is IC348, the Perseus cloud. It is right slap bang next to the bright star attic, so this could be quite difficult. It's a reflection based nebula, so darker skies are better here. It's a nice little tiny blue cloud next to attic. It looks really nice to image, and if I had an instrument that big, I'd be giving this one a go. Again, darker skies, true color is your best friend here. 1,500 millimeters if you're up for a little challenge, try the Perseus cloud. And at 2,000 millimeters now, the biggest I'm going to be recommending targets for, we're going over to Messier 108 in the constellation of Ursa Major. This is called the Surfboard Galaxy. We're still finding galaxies in deep dark winter. You can thank me later. And this is a small side-on looking galaxy. You can see why it's got its name, the Surfboard, from it. And this would really do nicely for a bit of color imaging. So 2,000 millimeters, if you're looking for something to image high up in the horizon, away from the light dome and stuff, then consider giving M108 a shot. Or 20, or 30, probably 50 most likely. A few. <laughs> now for you planet hunters, based around my latitude in the United Kingdom, I live around the Midlands, there's only really two planets that go above 20 degrees altitude. That's my cutoff, 20 degrees height. And that is Uranus and Neptune. Now, of course, there are some other planets dancing across the sky during December as well. But if you're higher up in the uh, Earth, if you're higher latitude, you're not gonna see them. But if you're lower latitude, they're gonna obviously be higher and your results may vary. But based around the United Kingdom, it's Uranus and Neptune that I'll be recommending for December. Now, events, there's a few events to talk about. One quite large one coming up later, which I'll speak about in a moment but we're gonna begin on the 14th of December, which is the Geminid meteor shower. So everyone likes a meteor shower, right? Deep dark sky is gonna be your best friends here, wide angle as well, and the lunar phase, 
is a little bit more conducive to actually viewing a meter shower. So, the 14th of November, so the 14th of December, a meteor shower from the Gemini constellation. On the 21st of December, we have the winter solstice. Now, a solstice is where the Earth is at its most furthest point in the orbit. I believe in this case, it will be perihelion, and the sun will be the lowest in the sky. I believe it's also known as the shortest day, because there's not much daylight. So the 21st of December is the winter solstice. By the way, if my science is completely wrong, be sure to school me in the comments down below. It'd be really appreciative. We're all here to learn. On the 22nd of December, we have the Ursid meteor shower. So this is always going to be good, another meteor shower. The unfortunate thing is, this is around the new moon period, so we might not actually be able to get to see much. I won't see anything at all because I live in England and it will undoubtedly be cloudy. And throughout December, if you look low to the southwest horizon below Venus, you might notice Comet C2021A1 Lovejoy. I believe this is another naked eye comet similar to what Neowise was, but maybe not as pronounced. But it's there in the sky, it's just very low down, it's going to probably be quite difficult to see. But look for Venus, you can tell Venus because it's the brightest planet in the night sky. It looks like a star. And then look down below it slightly. It was moving across and I hope you get to see it. And I hope I get to see it as well. And now to finish off, we're going to talk about the lunar phases for December. New moon falls on the 4th of December. The first quarter falls on the 11th of December. The full moon falls on the 19th of December and that is the cold moon, happy name. And the last quarter is the 27th of November. The cold moon was also sometimes known as the long night moon by some Native American tribes. During December, of course, the nights are their longest and their darkest, giving them their long dark name. And also it's December, it's cold. So cold moon doesn't really take a NASA scientist to work this one out. And that is it, that is the nice guy in December all done. And with that, we've finished 2021. Thanks very much for coming along with me and wanting these episodes. I might do them again in 2022. But in the meantime, keep the conversation going in the comments and keep looking up, keep them cameras clicking. I'll see you later and I'll see you in the new year. Bye-bye.